the argument is that for all RDAs, uh, we sort of test a population and come up with an average number, and then for a safety factor, which average would be 50% would be deficient. And so we add a safety factor of two standard deviations, which supposedly 97.5% of the people would be adequate to prevent any, any signs of inadequacy at that point. But that also means 2.5% of the people are actually deficient at that point. <laughs> so that, that's sort of the definition. Um, where does the RDA come from? I think it's useful to go back in history just a little bit then on protein. Um, how did we begin to evaluate protein needs? Well, it all came out of animal sciences. Back in the early 1900s, before we even knew the essential, all the essential amino acids, uh, farmers were trying to say, how do I get animals to grow best, you know, and different kinds of proteins and things like that. And they developed protein quality scores and things like that. So uh, how much growth did I get for what I fed? Uh, how much nitrogen did I deposit for how much I fed? So these were all rapidly growing animals and we developed this concept really of nitrogen retention. Uh, we've now translated into what's called nitrogen balance. That's how we determine the protein requirement. All of the concepts were developed for growth where nitrogen balance was positive. You could measure a change over time. And as we've now tried to start applying that to non-growing adults, it gets a lot more vague. Everyone who knows nitrogen balance says that nitrogen balance underestimates requirement. Everybody, uniformly. <laughs> but that is where the RDA comes from. And it, it, when you do short-term studies, what you find is most people, young adults, and again, all these studies were done with college-age students, so they're kind of right at the end of their growth. In a short-term, seven-day study, they look okay. So that's sort of where we're at. Uh, in the last 20 years, those of us who study protein have gone beyond that and said, well, Nitrogen balance is one outcome, but it, like the vitamin C argument, there are other outcomes based on amino acid metabolism that may be more important than minimum nitrogen balance. And, and we now know that protein handling goes down, the efficiency goes down as we get older. So now we have much higher requirements that, we, that most of us talk about for adults. For the most part, knowing essential fatty acids, carbs and fats are basically energy sources. They're carbon-carbon bonds that provide energy, where amino acids have a very different purpose and structure, and that nitrogen is part of what makes them different. If you're looking at animal source proteins, whether it's meat or eggs or milk, uh, basically all of the amino acids that a human would need are in those because they're basically, you know, obviously a chicken's not a mammal, but the others are mammals, and basically we have the same amino acids, the same proteins. So they're, they're all there. Uh, meat is a good example because they're all pretty much in the right balances. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.